Hi, my name is Pearl Uberu and I am a technical marketing engineer here at Databricks. In this video, I'm going to guide workspace administrators on how to set up Databricks SQL for their users. Databricks SQL is our data warehousing, analytics, and BI solution right here on Databricks. The first thing to do is to ensure that access to Databricks SQL is enabled for your workspace users. To do this, go to the admin settings of your workspace, click the Users tab, and within there, select Databricks SQL Access. You can also grant Databricks SQL Access to a group of users by selecting the Group tab and enabling it there. Now that I'm in the Databricks workspace, in the navigation bar on the left, you'll see a section titled SQL. Here, you can see the tools to create a query, view dashboards, explore data, or connect to a BI tool. Let's go ahead and check out SQL warehouses. SQL warehouses are the compute resources that let you run SQL commands on data objects within Databricks SQL. Here, you can see the pre-configured serverless SQL warehouse called Data Team Serverless Warehouse. Let's see how it was configured. The cluster size is an extra small cluster size because it's just me using it for now and it'll help keep the cost down. To reduce the latency of queries, you can increase the size of the cluster. Larger size clusters have a larger coordinator and doubles the number of cluster workers. This scaling piece is for horizontal scaling. Databricks can handle concurrent queries and admits them until the cluster is full before queuing starts. As previously stated, the warehouse we are using is serverless, and it is the compute resource that is managed in the Databricks cloud. As an admin or a data consumer, all the complexity of managing the underlying compute is abstracted away from the user. Therefore, data consumers, they can focus on creating insights with Databricks SQL. Serverless SQL warehouses simplify SQL warehouse management and accelerate launch times. Unity Catalog is also enabled on this warehouse. This will allow you to administer data access policies that apply across all workspaces and personas. Admins can grant permissions at the level of catalogs databases slash schemas, tables, and views. Let's save the configurations of the warehouse and set up the SQL warehouse access control levels. There are four permission levels for a SQL warehouse. No permissions, can use, can manage, and run as owner. You can add specific users or groups of users to receive certain permissions. In the connection details tab, this is where you can get your details to connect Databricks to your data ingestion tools like Rivery, and Fivetran, and your JDBC connections as well. In the Monitoring tab, administrators can examine the number of queries handled by the warehouse and the number of clusters allocated to the warehouse. When executing a query, you can navigate back to the SQL Warehouse Monitoring tab to understand the runtime statistics. Now, let's take a look at the Data Explorer. The Data Explorer provides a space to explore and manage catalogs, schemas or databases, tables, and permissions. The Data Explorer is the main UI for the Unity Catalog object model. Here, you can view schema details, preview data, and see table details and properties. Admins can change owners and grant and revoke permissions. Let's see how to create a catalog. A catalog is the first layer of the Unity Catalog hierarchy and is used to organize your schemas. You can create a catalog through the Data Explorer or a SQL command. To create via the Data Explorer, click Create Catalog button in the upper right corner. Then give the catalog a name and optionally a comment. Now, let's create a schema. A schema, also known as a database, is the second layer of the object hierarchy and contains tables and views. Navigate to your newly created catalog and in the right corner, click the Create Schema button. Here, you can give the schema a name and leave a comment as well. For the sake of this demo, I've already created my schema and in this case, it is called the TPCH schema. Next, 
Let's add permissions to the catalogs and schemas. At the catalog level, you can grant or revoke permissions by going to the Permissions tab. Similarly to the SQL warehouses, we can grant privileges to users and groups of users within our organization. Permissions can also be added at the more granular schema level. If we go to the TPCH schema, there's another permissions tab where we can grant or revoke permissions. These permissions will always apply to all objects within the schema. Now let's move on to query history. The query history shows SQL queries performed against SQL warehouses. You can use the information here to help debug and optimize your queries. Here you'll see the history of all queries performed against warehouses. This includes SQL runs from the SQL editor, dashboard refreshes, notebooks, jobs, and alerts. If you click on a particular query, you'll see the query details. This will include information such as the query's duration, the SQL command, the number of rows returned, and the I.O. performance. Click on See Query Profile. This will take you to a more detailed view of the query's performance, including its execution plan. Now that you've granted Databricks SQL access to your users, your SQL warehouse has been configured, and your catalog and schema has been set up, you can now grant further permissions to your analyst team so that they can start using Databricks SQL for their data warehousing, analytics, and BI needs.